All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today, we're talking all about heating with wood. So we recently installed this uh, new indoor wood stove here. We are, are kind of replacing an outdoor wood boiler that we wasn't installed properly uh, with a poor heating system in the house. And those two things combined were causing me a lot of problems. And so we decided to go with this indoor wood stove. Uh, we chose this, uh, it's, a, it's called the Vermont Bun Baker XL. Very cool stove. I'll put a link to the uh, stove over on their website in the description. And uh, this is actually a cook stove and a heating stove. So it's rated to heat between two, 2,000 and 2,500 square feet. It has a burn box on top and then it has below an actual oven that you can cook in um, as well as a cook surface on the top. So there's two burners that you can remove the cast iron plates uh, to get a little hotter um, access to the fire and you can cook right on the top of it and then uh, you know cook things in the oven as well. We have tried both cooking on the top and in the oven and uh, works really good. So, But we have been extremely happy with this stove. We are happy with all the installation. I wouldn't really change anything. Um, a lot of people commented about the rocks that we have here in front of it. There's all this river rock around it. Um, and it has been very easy to keep clean so far. I just run a vacuum cleaner through here maybe once a week and uh, just suck out any ashes or, or wood pieces or things like that that end up kind of here in front of it. But what I wanna talk to you about today is how well it has been heating. So that was the big question that many people had. So this is our first real experience with an indoor wood stove. And uh, over the past month and a half, we've really learned uh, how it heats, how well it heats, and, and uh, you know what it does and doesn't do. So let me talk a little bit about our house, um, just to kind of give you a, a general idea of, of how it's laid out and what we're heating here. This is a 1,500 square foot home. It is a tri-level. So right now we are sitting in the far corner of the lowest level of the home. It's con you know considered a basement, it's about half underground. Uh, and then right above us in the second story of the tri-level is our master bedroom as well as one of my daughter's rooms. Um, and the master bathroom and the laundry and all that is up above this. Um, there are some stairs that go up to the other end of the house, which is on a slab. That is where our kitchen, our dining room, uh, a bathroom is, as well as my other two daughters' room. They share a room down at the far end of the house. So right now it's about 26 degrees outside. Wind chill is about 16 degrees here in Michigan. So I have this uh, dual probe thermometer that I, uh, it's a pretty accurate, you know, a digital thermometer. So let's go take a few temperature readings around the house. Uh, we'll take temperature reading down here in the lowest level of the home where the wood stove is. We'll take a measurement up in the master bedroom, which is right above us here. And then we'll take another measurement at the farthest end of the house, which is furthest away from the wood stove itself. So uh, let's see what we get. So in the lowest level of the house here, we do have a ceiling fan. And I found that this makes a huge difference for uh, circulating the air around in here. So without the ceiling fan on, we have about a 15 degree difference in temperature. It gets really, really hot up in the ceiling area here and then you know down towards the living area where we are it's uh, it's way way cooler so um, keeping this fan on has helped to circulate a lot of air around the stove and collect more of that heat this stove does not have any type of blower on it at all and so this is uh you know it doesn't have any type of assistance as far as um, getting that heat around the house it's all just natural convection uh, movement of uh, hot and cold air throughout the house so right here, kind of in the center of the room, uh, right beneath the fan here, we've got about 83, uh, it went up to about 84 degrees here just a few minutes ago. So 83 degrees uh, is where it's about where it's settled in. And that's pretty common down here. Uh, generally in the morning, it'll be a little cooler uh, when we first get the, the fire started. Um, but throughout the day, the basement area will, will get uh, gets pretty hot. So this is actually our homeschool area as well. Um, as well as you know kind of our living space living area our TV and everything's down here And so what we have found is because it's so nice and cozy down here when it's 20 degrees outside and you come down here uh, Stand by this fire and just warms you right up. So it's nice to 
to have this room. Um, it's, it's a little hotter than we've ever you know, kept anything in the house. It's always been, normally we set our temperature at uh, you know, about 68 degrees on, our, on a regular furnace. So much, much warmer down here. But uh, let's see how warm it is upstairs. So this is right at the entrance to the master bedroom and the tiny room. If you follow along, I did a tiny room renovation to my right here as the uh, um, entrance to that room. So it's about 69, 70 degrees in this area. And just uh, raising the thermometer kind of up towards the ceiling here, you can see the big difference. It's about 75 um, up towards the ceiling. So if we had a ceiling fan up here or some way to circulate a little air a little better, um, we get, uh, we'd get the room temperature probably up um, 72, 73 degrees uh, pretty easily. But it usually stays about 70 degrees up here, um, you know, a comfortable temperature for sure. All right, here we are at the back of the house. So this is our back door leading outside. Uh, this is the furthest point away from the fire and it hovers right around 68. And there is a little bit of a draft back here by this door. Uh, you can tell that this is kind of, it needs to be sealed up a little bit better, but uh, still a very comfortable temperature back here, 68 degrees. Now it all depends on what we're burning, how we're burning it, and how hot we have the fire set. Of course, that can be adjusted. Right now, it's been going pretty good today. It's got a good bed of coals in it, and so yeah, the whole thing is heated up. I've been burning all kinds of different wood. I've got some apple in there. I've got some uh, some pine in there and some other junk woods uh, that, uh, that I've been burning. I do have some cherry and things like that I've been throwing in there from time to time as well. This little bin is kind of a temporary solution. We will plan to have an actual wood rack built in here uh, but what I do, this is about twice a day, I fill this bin up in the garage, carry this bin in here, and that's all the wood we use for the day. Uh, of course, it depends if we're here all day or not, and of course, it depends on uh, how hot we run the, the fire and what kind of wood we're burning and things. But on average, about two of these bins a day is what we've been, been burning uh, through some pretty cold weather. So as you can see, it really does heat the house really well. So one of the concerns I had um, before we put the stove in was how well is this thing gonna heat overnight? How are we gonna keep warm overnight when we're not able to feed this thing every couple hours? Uh, generally during the day, you know, every hour to two hours, I'm throwing a log in there to keep this thing really going. Um, you know, at least every three hours, something goes in there. Overnight though, I'm not gonna wake up every three hours and fill it. So uh, a couple things that we've done. So number one, we have our propane furnace set at uh, about 58 degrees and that's just as a total backup in case it got super cold and uh, we don't want to wake up and it'd be you know 40 degrees in the house um, i also have a small electric heater that we used to have down here uh, because our furnace never heats this lower level well uh, we always had an electric heater running down here keeping it at about 68. Um, i've moved that to my daughter's room which is the furthest room away from the fire here and i set that at about 66 68 degrees um, and it has only run off and on overnight uh, so sometimes it does drop below that temperature there in that room and that that little electric heater just comes on and helps to warm it up so if i'm burning pine or other things what i try to do at nighttime is get some, a good piece of wood um, i set aside some of that apple or that cherry or whatever other hardwoods i might have around and i'll get a good sized couple chunks of that and put it in there for overnight we turn the air vents all the way off here and there's a secondary air vent here that goes all the way off now that still allows some air to go in it doesn't shut it all the way off and so the, the fire will really just kind of smolder. This whole big, this is a 550 pound piece of cast iron. This thing is so, has so much heat energy in it. It also heats up the tile around here and the bricks and all these stones and this floor, the concrete floor and the walls down here, everything is just holding so much heat. The floor, you know, the ceiling above this room and everything, it holds a whole lot of heat. So most of the time we might just load it at 11 o'clock at night. Um, by three o'clock in the morning, the fire is usually pretty much down to just coals. By six o'clock in the morning, it's, it's pretty much out. And if I come down here and stir it around a little bit, I'll get some coals out of it. But, uh, there's, but you can still, you can't touch this thing. It still has so much heat in it. I keep that ceiling fan on and it just can't kind of keeps some air rotating around in here and keeps uh, moving some of that heat energy away from the, the rocks and the cast iron and everything. Uh, and it seems to keep the home just fine. So overall, how well do we like this thing? Well, my wife and I especially just absolutely love it. Uh, being able to come, I don't know, there's something about fire. There's something about, you know, sitting around campfires. There's something about just having this fire here that's so satisfying to just come down here and sit around it, to wake up in the morning and come down here and, and get the fire going. Um, it's so easy to get the fire going in the morning. Generally, I stir up uh, some of the coals in there. I may scoop out a little bit of ash in our, our ash bucket uh, that we just got on Amazon, actually. 
Um, and I'll put a link to that in the description. That's a really nice, handy little, uh, little ash bucket. So I might scoop it out, clean it up a little bit, get some of those coals kind of moved around and uh, throw some cardboard in there uh, and a few smaller pieces of wood, a few bigger pieces of wood on top of that and just close the door and let it go. Um, generally starts right up uh, as long as the wood is, is dry and, and everything's good. Um, we don't have any trouble with starting the fire in the morning. Even this basement floor that is, you know, maybe 10, 15 feet away from the fire is still warm. It heats up the concrete, it heats the walls all the way through. It heats the ceiling down here in the wood and the drywall the chairs and the tables and the couch and, and everything that's down here is, is just absorbing and holding that heat. Uh, it's a totally different, uh, different kind of heat, but, and there is some adjusting. It definitely feels colder upstairs. We'll, we'll, we'll be down here doing school or, or whatever. And uh, like right now I'm literally sweating. Uh, it's, it's like 85 degrees down here. I will walk upstairs into the 68, 70 degree room and it feels cold. Uh, it's not really cold, but it feels a lot colder. And so it's not a it's not evenly heated throughout the entire house and, and that's just something you get used to. So a lot of people ask, how does it work? How, how does this just one source of heat, this one fire, heat the whole home? And really it's just natural convection. The air in here, the hot air is rising up and it floats right up the, the stairs into the main level of the house and right up the stairs into the upper level of the house. And you can, if you feel the, the bottom you know, area, if you put your hand down towards the stairs, you can actually feel the cold air. It just rolls right down the stairs and rolls right down here and then gets warmed up again and then goes right back upstairs again. So you can really feel that, uh, that, that warm air just, it just moves throughout the house. It just kind of cycles through the cold air is always going to settle down at the lowest end and the hot air is always going to settle its way up to the top. And so you always have this kind of constant airflow without any electricity running, without anything going, even with the ceiling fan turned off down here, this thing heats the house just fine. So hopefully you enjoyed that update today on how well the, the wood stove has, has been working. That's been my number one question since I installed this. Everyone's just kind of anxious to see uh, how well this has been working. So hopefully that answered your questions. If it didn't, throw them down below and let me know. I will try to get to everybody, of course, as always, and, and answer any questions you may have. If you're thinking about getting a wood stove, check the link down in the description. You can check this one out. The company that sells these um, has a bunch of other really nice products as well. And this is not your, your Walmart, TSC, Home Depot, you know, wood stoves. All right. They, these are solid cast iron, uh, very, very high end, well built, stoves these are not your this is not going to be comparable with what you're going to go to tsc and get for a thousand dollars these are just in their own league above that if you're very comparable with some of the other premium wood stove brands in the united states uh, this is uh, uh, one of those types of brands so don't forget to hit thumbs up on the video guys there'll be more on this stove coming out soon lots of good stuff coming out soon i'm getting outside to the greenhouse we're going to be building a pallet building out there uh, completely made from pallets uh, we're going to be building some raised beds out there and in a way that i've never tried before and uh, starting to get some things growing maple syrup season's just around the corner we got to get ready for that as well so stick around for all that good stuff of course you have to be subscribed to know when those things come out and you got to make sure you hit that little bell next to the subscribe button otherwise you're not going to get notified when videos come out so make sure you do that and as always guys thanks for watching have a good one